Do you want a tablet or do you want a computer? Since the birth of the iPad, the case for tablets has grown stronger and stronger. But to actually do stuff, you know, stuff like life stuff, computers still reign supreme. Microsoft, however, are attempting to flip things completely on their head. For years and years and years, their software has educated, entertained and assisted us in all of our life stuff. But within the space of a single Moore's Law, you know, the one that states that electronic devices double in performance every 18 months, Microsoft is now seen as an ancient dinosaur. Understandably, they don't like that, and this is their response to the new technological touchscreen world, the Surface RT. Is it a tablet? Is it a computer? And more importantly, is it any good? Surface is, of course, great for entertainment. It has access to all of the Windows apps for music, for video, for Xbox and gaming. We can see here I'm running Internet Explorer. I can browse smoothly, use, see great pages using, the, using clear type. I can go and play any of the interesting games that are on, in the Windows Store. And I can use Surface for using all the sensors that are within Windows as well. Surface works for all of those games. Interesting, but you seem to be hesitating. What's up? Movies and entertainment look great as well. Oops. Whoops. Hang on. Whoops. Hang on. Why? There. Excuse me, just a second. Hmm. Not the most auspicious start for Microsoft's answer to the tablet market. I wonder how many more spare tablets I had in the back there just in case another one broke down. And this guy here, the one breaking the tablet, his name is Steve Sanofsky. And what's interesting about this chap is that he was the head of the Windows division at Microsoft, right up to the point where Windows 8 and this very tablet we're talking about were released. Officially, it was an amicable split. The rumours, it was a power struggle between himself and Steve Ballmer. And let's be honest, that guy's a complete nutcase. Anyway, the bottom line is something isn't quite right at Microsoft and probably hasn't been for quite a while now. Don't get me wrong, Windows XP, Windows 7, the Xbox 360, all great products, but in the eyes of the consumer world, this company has been making far better hardware products which just so happen to come with their own blend of software, and Apple themselves have been making a mountain of money off it. More money than the 38 million people who live in Poland, apparently. And one strand of those Apple products doing particularly well at the moment are tablets. For a decade, nothing more than a niche world full of gimmick products. And then, single-handedly, Apple created the modern tablet market. The iPad, an astonishing content consumption device that has evolved in an incredible manner since it was first launched in April 2010. The iPad and all the Android tablets that have sprouted up as well are beginning to seriously challenge a product that sat comfortably in businesses, schools and our homes for the last 25 years, the personal computer. And who has a virtual monopoly on that market? Microsoft, of course. So a new technology and a piece of fruit are leaving Microsoft behind. But the one saving grace that may save the Seattle company is this. Tablets do not create stuff very well. The keyboard, the mouse, the flexibility of PC operating systems still trounce tablets when it comes to creativity, productivity and complexity. Yes, I think I've just made that word up. And this is basically where Microsoft feel they can succeed where the Asus Transformer Prime with its underpowered Android base failed to create a tablet computer hybrid. At one moment it's a 10 inch tablet which you can read like a newspaper, swipe Angry Birds from and watch YouTube videos. The next it's a word processor, spreadsheet, fully fledged web browser and well it depends what other productivity apps developers make for it. This is a Windows tablet, more or less. You see, the confusing thing for the average man in the street is that while this does have Windows, it's not the Windows we are accustomed to. And that's where we'll start this review. What does Windows RT actually mean? Perhaps the most pertinent question to begin with is what does the RT bit stand for and why is it so relevant? Well, RT means runtime. 
So you can see why Microsoft have abbreviated it. Runtime. It's hardly an inspiring title, is it? Windows with Bang Crash would have been better. Technically speaking though, RT is important. It's a method of squeezing the Windows architecture into different chips that run tablets and mobile devices. This means big trade-offs, huge ones in fact. The Surface RT is a compromise of the Windows 8 operating system, which leads to the following question. If it is a Windows machine, then it can run all my old programs, right? The answer to that, I'm afraid, is a big fat no. To put it in layman's terms, if you download any program off the internet that you would usually install on a computer, you won't be able to install the same thing on the Surface RT. If you do download what's commonly known as an executable file, this is what's going to happen. If you're turned off by this revelation, I don't blame you. The damage and impact of this is that only applications designed for Windows RT devices will work. So we are basically starting from scratch, even though it's a Windows machine. The figures are stark. Google's Android and Apple's iOS operating systems both have over half a million apps in their environments. The Windows App Store currently has, well, a fraction of that. It's difficult to say. Tens of thousands of apps at the most. More on that later. So what you're saying to me is that the Surface RT is just a big fat con, right? It's just another tablet. Well, let's not get too downhearted just yet. No, the Surface RT isn't just another tablet. While it is a stripped down Windows operating system, it is still a Windows operating system. That means you do get a desktop, so you can create icons and manage files as you usually would. The tablet is also very flexible when it comes to attaching devices to it. Not only does the USB port accept mice, keyboards and game controllers, but it will also handle hard drives, printers and more unusual devices such as this condenser microphone. It's feeding off the vast driver library that's been built up through the Windows environment over years and years. A little word of warning though, not everything works so it is worth checking out the compatibility list at Microsoft. You also get Internet Explorer which is actually a good thing because it's as close as you'll get to a proper browsing experience on a tablet and we'll look at this in more detail later. You also get all of the crazy PC style tools like Task Manager, Task Scheduler and Disk Defrag. Although whether you really want all these on a tablet is a jolly good question. One of the good things about tablets is that they look after themselves and take away some of the system management pain you've had to put up with in the past. The biggest selling point of all though when it comes to software is that the Surface RT comes with Office. And I do mean Microsoft Office. Proper word processing, Excel spreadsheets and PowerPoint applications. It is the real deal and it's the latest version as well so you can work as well as play. So the Surface RT has much less than a regular computer, but also a lot more than a regular tablet. It's a very blurred line though, and unless you do your research and know exactly what this thing can and can't do, you're going to be left very confused very quickly by this device. Now, I've answered some very basic questions there about the Surface RT, but to unravel the whole mystery, this will require some very elementary detective work and we'll start with the design of a device. At first glance, the Surface RT has quite an ordinary look to it. Aesthetically speaking, I would say it looks a little dated. No doubt this is a personal opinion, but the tablet is much more angular than most other tablets, and it gives off a false impression of being thicker than what it actually is. Put it up against an iPad and there's no difference, but the curved sides of many tablets distort how thick or thin they are. If anything, the Surface RT looks like a technological brick, so to speak. Weight is another interesting aspect of the tablet. It's as heavy as an iPad, but it feels somehow lighter, and this is because the weight seems to be better distributed around the whole tablet. And the tablet is nice to hold, and it feels like you're holding metal in your hands. And that's because you are, because it's made from some fancy technology called VaporMag, which is moulded magnesium. The Surface definitely feels like a premium product that's well made and robust, but for the price you're paying you should feel that way. The edges of a tablet are quite busy, and this is where the Surface RT begins to show off some of its PC heritage. There are speakers dotted along the sides and top of a tablet, a volume rocker, headphone jack, a USB port, a micro HDMI port, a magnetic charging port, 
a magnetic strip on the underside of a tablet for special keyboards, and tucked under the kickstand, a micro SD card slot. Action packed to say the least, and we'll put some of this stuff under the microscope later. We'll stick with the kickstand first though, and compliment Microsoft for including a much needed addition to 10 inch tablets. Although it's very thin, the kickstand does feel very strong. You feel as if you can open and close it thousands of times and not worry about wearing it or its hinges out. It also makes a very satisfying click noise when you close it, which is obviously a very deliberate effect as it appeals to the inner geek in all of our souls. Now, if the kickstand was a completely independent aspect of the device, I would be more than happy to give it a thumbs up. Unfortunately, the kickstand is a compromise to accommodate this, the touch cover keyboard. This keyboard and trackpad take advantage of a magnetic strip along the bottom of a tablet which suck in and then lock the keyboard whenever they come into contact with each other. It's a very cool trick and immediate logic suggests that having a keyboard that's only a few millimetres thick adds to the compact mobility of a tablet. But on further investigation you will find that it does completely the opposite. The moment you want to use a touch cover, the Microsoft service turns from being a tablet into a desktop computer. And I mean that in a very negative way. The keyboard has no structural support to the machine, so you can't light on your legs in a horizontal position and sit up on a sofa or in a bed and type. The keyboard is too flimsy if it's not on a flat surface, and a kickstand can't prop up the tablet unless it's also on a flat surface. This is exactly why laptops are a lazy person's best friend. As impressive as the design and the idea is for a touch cover keyboard, it's totally counterproductive to a key way the tablet might be used. And to further complain, the touch cover keyboard has no moving parts, so you don't get any tactile feedback from the keys when you're typing. It's very unsettling, and it often leads me to type with a lot more force than I usually would. You can get a type cover, which does include moving keys, but it's even more expensive than the outrageously priced touch cover. And think about this. The touch cover doesn't add any extra battery life or USB ports or storage slots. It's such a wasted opportunity. And in this respect, I do go back to the Asus Transformer series of tablets, whose keyboards added a lot more to the whole product experience. The keyboard in the Surface RT adds gimmicks and not much else besides. Fortunately, you can get a Surface RT without a keyboard because they cost an extra £80 or £100 if you want a different colour or the type cover. And I'm afraid most of the other Surface RT bonuses include caveats as well. While there are plenty of speakers on the device, the highest volume just isn't loud enough. The micro HDMI port will let you plug the tablet into a television, but just be wary of your resolution because you can only load applications if you can get a resolution that includes 768 vertical lines. This took me a month and four frustrating videos to find out. And the battery lead is a bit fiddly as well. It doesn't slot into the magnetic strip very easily, and it means you can only charge a tablet through one expensive plug. It's hardly what you would call flexible. And then there's a micro SD card slot. Yes, all good, very fine. If you survive a heart attack, you will suffer when you check how much space you have on your 32GB tablet when you first buy it. Let's put it this way, it's not 32GB. Don't you think that's utterly ridiculous? Because I do. Fundamentally, the design of a Surface RT is fine. You can play with it in a shop and think, yeah, this is pretty cool. But under the cool veneer, we have a vast array of niggles. The touch cover feels as if somebody has tried to reinvent the wheel. The tablet is very wide, meaning it's hopeless if you try and hold it in portrait. And it's only USB 2.0 when it really should have been USB 3. You see, I'm finding even more complaints now. Maybe I should leave the design alone and get into the tablet itself, as the user interface of the Surface RT and Windows 8 is something I've been waiting to play with for a very long time. As you can see, the first thing that stands out about this Windows 8 environment is that it's a huge departure from what you may be used to. Yes, the Surface RT does have a desktop, but you can't set up program icons like you usually would. It's there primarily for office software and file management, so get used to using this new touchscreen layout. 
obviously that's a sensible thing. And you can see that everything is big, bold, striking and colourful. That's one of the things I like about the Surface RT when you first use it. It has a warm appearance and you can tinker very quickly with the settings to get a theme you prefer. The start screen is dominated by tiles, which are essentially programs or widgets. And these can be made large or small, and you can scroll from right to left to see what your tiles are. There are no individual screens as such, like in iOS or Android. It's a continuous flow of tiles. Many icons come with live features too, such as news headlines or the weather in certain parts of the world, your high scores and games and so on. Although you can turn these off if too many of them get too distracting. You can manage tiles into groups as well so that you can place games or news together in a single group, pick them up and then move them somewhere else on the screen. In short, this all makes good common sense. And to add more functionality, the Surface includes a host of off-screen, onto-screen gestures. If you swipe your finger in from the right side of the screen, you will bring up the charm bar that provides you with a range of options. Swipe in from the left side of the screen and you can quickly switch from one open application to another and you can see how seamless this is. You can also bring in an app and place it alongside an application you're already using. One app will work in full mode while the other works in a kind of mini mode, almost like a mobile phone version of the application. Technically, that's an impressive feat and it does give you some elements of multitasking, although it doesn't really compare to Windows' ability to multitask. And in fairness, I can't see any touchscreen designed operating system ever comparing to a desktop operating system when it comes to multitasking. If you swipe in from the bottom or top of the screen, then the results become a little muddy. It depends what screen you're on or what application you're using. This action usually brings up context options, whether it's syncing your email, choosing a different browser tab, refreshing the content, it varies quite a lot. However, swiping in from the top of the screen does give you the extra option of picking up the application in order to swipe it to one of the sides to make it a multitask application or all the way down to the bottom of the screen to close it. That's quite a laborious way of closing an application and I don't particularly like it that much. And finally, of course, we have the ubiquitous home button at the bottom of the tablet that comes in the form of a Windows logo that does have haptic feedback. So, on the surface of the Surface RT, I had to get that pun in somewhere. The interface is colourful, friendly and sensible. But when you've used it for a while, you do begin to realise that in many ways, it's crude and quite basic. Let's start off with the tiles. They're far too big. You can have a maximum of 24 tiles on the screen at once, which isn't many. For me, anything that's not on my start screen when I first unlock the tablet is used much, much less than anything I see straight away. There should be an option to include a fourth row of tiles as well, or put them into folders like you can do in every single other operating system. Secondly, the live tiles are a very poor man's version of widgets. You can't interact with them. Often they display information too quickly or not enough information. Headlines, for example, are sliced up mid-sentence, and they're not very intuitive either. For example, pressing on a headline doesn't take me to the article, it just opens up the application. I still have to find the article. That's, well, yes, I've said it already, just crude. Some of the system navigation is a little confusing and pedantic too. Just to give you two examples, to get to settings, you have to swipe in from the right, choose settings, and then press change PC settings. The tiles link on this screen here is a waste of time because it only includes two options. Why should such an important screen be hidden away and take some detective work to find? Secondly, this is how you change the font size in the native news application. And this is how you change it in another news application called Appy Geeks. That's two very different ways of doing exactly the same thing. And you'll find that this happens time and time again when you use the Surface RT. As with the design of the device, the basic functions of the Windows RT operating system has promise and good ideas, but it comes with a lot of flaws. It's not quite hitting the marks or ticking the boxes. There's always a but at the end of every sentence. And do you think for one second that things are going to get any better when we start talking about the applications?
Judging by the tone of my voice, you can probably guess the answer. Consumers will forgive slight design flaws and questionable operating systems, but if there isn't enough choice from the big developers, unique killer applications, or support for the most popular services, then there's no reason to buy the product. We've seen this happen time and time again in the video games console world. If there ain't the games, there ain't the interest. Let's put this into simple terms. There is no official Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Gmail, Tumblr, Blogger, WordPress or BBC application. Now I've picked out a few very random but very popular services or applications. There are certainly unofficial apps for many of these things, but determining which are the best and most useful is very difficult. Now obviously this is a very very bad thing. But I will say this, and it's very important for the future of the Surface RT. For many things that you would usually download an application for on a tablet, the Surface RT can do via its web browser. Yes, the browser is exceptional, even if it is Internet Explorer. You can use it via the touchscreen version or go old school via the desktop. Either way, it supports Flash pretty well and it's almost as flexible as a proper desktop browser. I say almost because there are little niggles like you can't install Microsoft Silverlight which means I can't watch Love Films on my tablet. That just seems a bit bizarre. But things like Twitter, Facebook and normal desktop websites work so well that you don't even need an app for them. Having such a strong browser does go a very long way to saving the Surface RT and the lack of applications available. But obviously it doesn't go far enough and it never can do. And if you do despise Internet Explorer, well you're royally screwed because that's the only browser available. Before I talk about the applications in general, let me first talk about the Windows App Store which is, like the tablet itself, somewhat docile. First of all, on the main screen the categories are endless, which means you have to scroll a long long way to reach categories like productivity, tools and education. Then, when you press on an application to look at it in more detail, the screens are really quite bare. You have to press on links to see different things as well. There's no video preview, which means developers can't host my videos. Sorry, that's a little bit of a plug there. And there's no sense of community spirit. At this point, when I'm looking at an application, things I would like to know are, what other applications are there like this one? What other applications has this developer made? How can I quickly switch to another category? It's just horrible to use and puts me off rummaging around the App Store. It's like every time I want to look at something, I have to navigate my way into a dead end and then back out when I've finished. The App Store also breaks quite a lot, forcing me to restart the tablet, and it doesn't auto-update applications. That's just a chore I'd rather not do. Now, the troubling thing is, the Windows App Store application is very much a template of how many other applications look and feel. I thought at first I would enjoy the seamless scrolling motion rather than swiping screens, but it simply means that you have to press your finger on the screen to scroll for longer and you often get lost because there's no page break. And this impression of barren screens seems to pervade so many content driven applications. It's just words and blank spaces with pictures randomly dumped on the screen. It looks like you're reading a school newspaper half the time and it's excruciating. And don't get me started on the fonts. Well, alright then, get me started on the fonts. Although I have already done two videos on this subject in the past. They're too small in too many applications and you're very lucky if you can resize the fonts. The only app that I've found that does this well are the News Republic applications. Not being able to resize fonts? Unforgivable. If you're a regular follower of my channel, you will know that I make videos called App Snacks which are bite-sized reviews looking at applications I recommend for tablets. What you'll also notice is that to date I've made just four Surface RT App Snack videos. The simple truth is I haven't found many applications worth recommending. I certainly haven't found any applications that distinguish the Surface RT. Apps on other tablets are better. It's as simple as that. And it's so frustrating using the App Store that to be honest, in recent times, I've given up trying looking for new apps. And remember, you can't download regular PC programs, so we're pretty much done. Any hardware device will live and die by the software that it provides, and the Windows RT environment simply doesn't provide good software. With, of course, one notable exception, 
and it is the piece of software that will make business people and students sit up and take notice. I'm not going to go into the details of Microsoft Office. I'm sure you all know what it is. What it means for a tablet is that you can unlock the device and be writing a document within seconds on the most popular productivity office software in existence. In theory, it sounds like the perfect compromise for college types too. A compact mobile device to take into the classroom to take notes, write essays in the library, and then maybe chill out and browse on in the evenings. All on a single battery charge with juice left to spare. And when you finish your work, the printer drivers that support the Surface and the common file formats mean that you're able to get your work off a tablet very easily. Never has there been a tablet capable of doing this. But here's the big question, and this isn't necessarily anything to do with the Surface RT, it's a broader question about the dynamics of the technology world we live in today. Is a single device such as the Surface RT preferable to a standard laptop? No. Laptops have proper keyboards, laptops have a full Windows operating system, more USB ports, the ability to use multiple windows for true multitasking, and access to all the window programs I want and need. Can you do this on a Surface RT? Okay then, next question. Is the Surface RT preferable to any other tablets? Well, you've been watching the last 25 minutes, what do you think? The simple truth is the Surface RT is a first generation Windows tablet and it shows. The tablet market is so fast moving that with a two year head start, iOS and Android are light years ahead and I'm afraid there is no room for sentiment. Just because Microsoft are behind the times doesn't mean we should compare this to a first generation iPad or a HP touchpad. It would be like releasing a GameCube in the video games console world now. I'm afraid the Surface RT is too late. It does show promise, but it has too many flaws that make you say, that's just stupid. For example, a nice vibrant screen, but the resolution is very poor compared to similar tablets. That's just stupid. Why is there no battery meter tile with a percentage? To find out exactly how much battery you have on your Surface RT, you have to go to the desktop and do this. That is just stupid. Why can you open up loads and loads of apps, but you can only see the most recent five you have opened? Where are the other ones? They're running, but I can't find them. That's just stupid. And the touch cover keyboard. That is just utterly and completely stupid. If you've made it through to the end of this review, then I do applaud you. Negative reviews aren't always the most enjoyable or satisfying to watch. And I can imagine that I've probably alienated a few people along the way. So let me add these two points. First, I gave the Surface RT plenty of time to prove itself. Three months and 50 individual review videos. And in all that time, I simply never found enough of anything to impress me. Secondly, the Surface RT was probably at a disadvantage before I even unboxed it. I have owned an iPad, a HP touchpad, a Transformer Prime, and an Nexus 7, and by far and away the best form factor for my personal taste when it comes to tablets is the Nexus 7. I love the size, weight and feel of it and I think it's going to take an extraordinary effort for any tablet to change my mind and move from a 7 inch tablet back to a large 10 inch tablet. If nothing else, the Surface RT has convinced me of this, there is no synergy effect. You cannot combine a tablet and a personal computer. There are just too many compromises to be made. If you want to do work, you want a powerful machine with a large screen. If you want to play, you want something immediate, agile and compact. A tablet cannot transform between the two. The Surface RT with a keyboard costs $600, or about £480. You can get two devices for the same price. A Nexus 7 and a Windows 8 laptop, for example. Or you could get a Nexus 10 or an iPad mini and a notebook computer. Two dedicated devices that do better jobs than a single device for the same price or potentially less. And you may be wondering why I keep showing you this screen. That's because from the very moment the Surface RT was released, it was obsolete. The Surface Pro is now out. 
This version of the tablet does include the full Windows 8 operating system, so you can do whatever you want with it. However, with one USB port, half the battery life of a normal tablet, and an astronomical cost, it's going to be a very hard sell. After my experience with the Surface RT, I'm simply not interested. It needs to be said, people, Microsoft's mission to break into the tablet market may end up being an impossible one.